Hey everyone, and welcome to another Yogi Misfit session. My name is Danny Pomploon, and I'm your host. Today we have Melissa May Smith on the show. What up, Melissa? What's up, baby? What's up? Hey, what's up, girl? Hey. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing all right. How you doing? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I just got back from um, from retreat, so I had a really rough weekend. I had to. Uh, yeah. you know, the pain I had to endure this weekend was sleep in and teach one yoga class a day and eat food prepared for me and lay by a pool. So I'm, you know, I'm going through it. Wow. You know, that's a really tough life, man. Yeah. I figured today's topic would be Danny's life is very hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think at one point I actually looked at the group and I was like, this is ridiculous that this is my quote unquote, you know, job. Like this is what I do as work. Word. It's no. Kind of, it's kind of fun. <laughs> Yeah, I get that all the time. People are like, oh, so you're a yoga teacher, so you teach yoga for a living. <laughs> it's like, yeah, actually, that's, that's exactly what that is. <laughs> that's that's how that works. You're a doctor. Oh, so you doctor for a living. Huh. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> what are your hours like, doctor? Um. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> it's kind of cool, though, actually, if you think about it. Like, I mean... I love what I do for sure. I know you do, but like it's it's Absolutely. kind of like you don't really I think we uh um I had this conversation not too long ago, but we don't really think about it because we're yoga teachers, but like you don't really know a lot of other yoga teachers. Right. You know like, oh, this is my friend so and so. He's in tech or here's my other friend so and so. He works at this place and then you're like, this is my other friend Melissa. She's a yoga teacher. That's it. <laughs> That's all you do. That's it. Yep. Yep. And, uh, and for some, it's like, that's it. That's all you do. You know what I mean? There's yeah. like a, little, there's a little difference there. Yeah. The, when, especially yeah. when you're doing it full time, it's, it's, it's a whole nother level. For sure. No, the other day I was asked, so, um, you actually make a living off of that? And I was like, well, how the hell do you think I bought your beer, dude? Like <laughs> yeah, definitely make a living doing this and more or less not only making a living, but a life, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think people forget that. Like, you know, it's it's it goes, it goes beyond just like actually doing it for work. But it's actually like I don't know. I, for 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 some of us, I think that we take it to a whole new level in in a good way. Absolutely, yeah. All right, Melissa. And, this, oh, sorry, yeah. I cut you off. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. No, That's you fine. no you go. Okay, I go. I was just going to say I agree, and like you know, for me personally, that's what I try to do is to take it something beyond the physical, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I, I I agree with it whole like wholeheartedly. That's that's my jam. It's 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 more than just like a thing that I do. It's actually, it's part of a way of life. And and not to say that like I'm like this like yogi saint or whatever because I'm far from it. But it, there's definitely really cool things about it that like you know I, I've implemented into my life because of it. Likewise, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna um I'm gonna ask you what I ask everybody on the show. Why yoga? Hmm. Why yoga? Mm -hmm. Ah, <sighs> well, why not? I guess would be my response. That's everyone's uh, favorite response. Isn't that? And Damn. It's so, you know, it's, it's so true, so though. True. <laughs> you know, the cliches are cliche because they're true, like yeah. universally, right? So yeah. um, why yoga? Yes, why not? But seriously, why yoga? Is it because it's like the, it's the thread that holds all of the other pieces of my life together? Um, okay. okay. It, yeah, and it like draws like a completion in that thread of like a complete circle or like a mala where it's like everything is connected. Um, even if it seems to be separate. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm into that. Yeah. And also it is like we were saying a, a way of life, right? So it's like in the Patanjali yoga sutra, we have the five restraints and five observances that I try to incorporate into all experiences. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's uh, I'm also a human. So that's like it's it's a practice. It's not a perfect. Um, and we all know that, too. You know, so it's a living thing. It's a breathing thing um, that I try to bring into all aspects of life. How long have you been practicing and how long have you been teaching? I've been practicing for almost eight years. I'm going to age myself there a little bit because I started in college and uh, I've been teaching for about six. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And you, how many classes a week do you, you teach full time? This is what you do. 
this is what I do. Yes. And currently I teach about 12 classes with a couple privates in there. That is some thug stuff, man. You know, I try to keep it real because it is not easy. It is quite the hustle. You know, people think that like, oh, you're a yoga teacher, so you're just super chill all the time. And that's far from the truth. You know, I try to be Zen, but uh, it's a hustle, as I know you know. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's it's not it's not easy for sure. It's it definitely requires a lot of work, and you have to be super creative as far as like what are you going to do next, and what's going to happen, and you know you have to plan for for you have to plan for the next thing that's going to you know kind of sustain or, or keep you going. So yeah, yeah, because I mean, offering the same thing over and over again, like most other jobs, isn't you know something that's going to keep you hired or doing what you want to do well, so yeah you got to be creative yeah and if you're yeah exactly if you're if your teaching isn't changing and whatnot like you're then there's a bigger problem if your teaching hasn't changed since like <laughs> you know the last even even in the in a year like you you got to look at that you can't just you regurgitate the same stuff over and over again for sure yes absolutely um and i am glad to say that i have definitely evolved since i began teaching six years ago so you have a really deep spiritual practice, Melissa. I would say so. Anyway, from from what I know of you, I would say you have a pretty deep spiritual practice. What does that What does that look like for you? Like in addition to your your physical yoga, what does your spiritual practice look like? So my spiritual practice um, it begins every morning, um, where I get to wake up and before I check my phone. Um, so before I get online and I make anybody else a priority, I, I make myself like my, my true self, my highest self, my number one. And, uh, how I like to do that is to do the things that bring me happiness, um, upon reflection as well. So I read in the mornings and I don't really have a time frame, but if I have something that I need to be doing, I'll, you know, say, Hey Siri, can you set a time for 10 minutes? And so I'll read for 10 minutes and then I write in journal for 10 minutes. Um, generally, that's like stream of consciousness. However, if I do have a prompt in mind, so this morning was like, why yoga, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so then from there, I practice for however long I can physically um, upon pranayama before that. And then I chant and uh, I break my silence that way. And then I go about my day. And so my spiritual practice, in essence, besides doing those things in the morning, is mm -hmm. to try to incorporate those within the day. Sure, so sure. yeah, just br bringing like a gentle awareness around most things. Um, and also trying to treat people, even if they aren't spiritual, as spiritual beings, because we truly all are in my eyes. So that's like, I, I try to draw the common denominator there of like, we are all spiritual beings having a human experience. And how can I make this better for you? Right, right. Speaking of spirituality, what, what would you say like being a spiritual gangster means to you? Oh, yeah. Well, okay. So I love, I love that, that term spiritual gangster. Um, cause I do feel like that is truly to me. You know how like there are bhaktis, um, bhakti yogis that are just like so heart centered. Right. Yeah. And, um, and I, I definitely believe that I'm all, all types, right? So the Raja yogi, the karma yogi, the yana yogi, and the um, bhakti yogi. But for me, I think a spiritual gangster, like all gangs, right? Where it's like, if you're in the bloods, like you believe in loyalty to that gang and like you hang around like-minded people or whatever. Not to say that we're a gang in that, re in that way. We go, <laughs> we go, we go around oming people. Exactly. Like a drive by ohm, you know? Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> we're about to uh, up, uproot your chakras. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. So like I see spirituality like something of a gang in the best way possible, of course, because non-harming is our first and foremost, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's an inclusive gang. It's something that everybody is welcome to. And it focuses on connection, right? Spirituality is about connection, not necessarily to a specific affiliation, mm -hmm. um, but to something greater. And so I find that like spirituality is more over like a yogic lifestyle, of course, for me. Um but it is a, a living practice. And um, I don't know, it's being like keeping it real, you know, like you're real, you're functional, you're a misfit, you know it. Right. And I'm in the same way, like, I'm not a perfect person. When I say I'm tired to somebody that's like, but you're a yoga teacher, aren't you supposed to be like energetic? Don't you have practices for that? I kind of give them a side eye. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm a human too. Right. You know, Right. and it's not like I, I cuss when I want to, I have bad days, if I have bad days, you know, like, 
I think a spiritual gangster in that way, like doesn't give a fuck about some things, but gives a fuck about some things. Right, right. Yeah. And also is able to keep it real too at the same time. Doesn't have to put on this like fake facade of like, oh yeah, look at me. I'm like this, you know, higher than thou or, you know, whatever it is. Like, you know, this kind of like, I'm not, I don't want to say I'm a little bit better than you, but I'm a little bit better than you is the only thing that's coming onto my mind right now. Mm-hmm. It's an actual real, there's a real rawness about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, um, oh, like, yes, exactly. Like, uh, putting on a front, like I'm not bothered at any time and that I'm, you know, always patient and I'm always kind, you know, I try to be, but there's the practice, right? So it's just constantly bringing it to the new experience on the daily instead of just being like, well, I was kind that one time. So I'm kind all, all, all the time. It's that, you know? it's that thought or that, that, uh, that quote, you know, the, the saying it's, we are, we're all spiritual being, we're all, we're all spiritual beings having this human experience exactly you know we're just like these big balls of energy in these bodies yeah (laughs) and sometimes our bodies get tired and sometimes you know like it's it's just it's not all one way of course like that's what yoga is too is like the diminishing of duality however being aware that we do live in a dualistic world good and bad black and white you know so it's like by being a spiritual gangster it reminds me that yes, like we are all connected and we are having this experience together and in a, a like a gangway of like community, like Kula or um, Sangha, you know, like we right. surround ourselves with these people, our, our spiritual family that believe in that too. And so I'm just, I feel really, really lucky to, to have friends like you and others that show the mirror to me when I am being more human, you know, like, Hey, don't like, remember that principle that we talked about or that we all try to emulate ahimsa like for yourself and for others i dig on that and i also like i was going to touch to your point like the whole like we get tired or whatnot i just deny that i'm tired and i keep going (laughs) (laughs) i'm just like oh it's it's time to go to sleep where's another project i can work on (laughs) right Uh, but then i do have people that call me out they're like hey listen like we get it. You're doing your thing or whatever. Make sure that you're practicing. Make sure that you're eating right. Make sure that you're taking care of yourself and, and make sure that you're checking in and being honest and, and you know, making sure that your needs are being met before you actually start to put out even more energy. Right. Because that's something I don't think everybody understands about being a yoga teacher is how much energy you really give in every class. I think people forget to, and it's not like, you know, when you're Listen, you can have bad. I think it's it's okay to have bad days. You know, everyone has bad days. But there's a difference between being having a bad day and sitting in an office and you know sitting at your desk and writing some emails or you know whatever. And I'm not knocking that. I'm 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 not knocking that at all. I'm just saying it's a little bit easier to maybe process that or not have to deal with us. What with with uh, we're in a we're we deal with the with the public. You know, right. we, we have to. Yeah. There's this quote unquote not facade, but we have to. We have to be in a good mood. Your yoga teacher is like your yoga teacher. They're supposed to be there to like, you know, uplift and and so on and so forth. And when you're a person like, I don't know, myself who wears his heart on his sleeve, you know, like, you know, when I'm not in a good mood, you know, when I'm sad or, you know, when I'm really deep in thought or, you know, when I'm extremely excited, you know, like there's a lot of Mm -hmm. pressure to have, you know, that, uh, you know, that, 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 that. I keep wanting, I'm, I'm lost at words today, but I guess the facade of like everything has to be okay. And I think part of being real, part of being spiritual is recognizing when you're not and being able to triage that as you're not. Yeah, absolutely. Because it, it, it does take a lot of interpersonal skills to be a yoga teacher and facilitator for transformation if you aren't in the best space for that at that moment in time, yeah. you know, because people go to you in good times and in bad and whether you're there or not, like you do hold space for those people and you do guide them to those, those doors. You can't make them walk through, of course, but you know, so then it's, it's about turning like that practice of what you're doing to serve others and speaking to those experiences instead of just being like, you know, I am unbothered and completely okay. 100% of the time. Instead you can bring those things to light in your classes, right? And say, Hey, 
does anybody else get like, you know, that like irritation that you like snap to when you get cut off in traffic and you're just like, fuck that guy. Right. Yeah. Like we all have those things and maybe that's happening for you in this pose, but what can we do instead to say, notice that without becoming it? Right. 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 Oh, that's so hard. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I, I don't want to do any of that crap. <laughs> Gosh, I know. I so, so get that. What do you say to someone that's like, all right, I kind of want to start like some sort of spiritual practice. And that's such a vague term, but we'll just continue it in the context. You know, what do you say if someone's like, yeah, all right. So I want maybe want to start like a spiritual practice. I, my response is what you need to do is go buy a spiritual gangster t-shirt, put it on. <laughs> <laughs> buy Mollas, wear them, but don't use them. Right. Dr and, uh... <laughs> drink some green tea. And just and, and casually say namaste, just randomly to people, like yes. throughout the day. Yes, absolutely. In, in, in the wrong context. So that's, <laughs> yeah. that's a number five with fries. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> well, damn it. You stole my answer because that's exactly what I was going <laughs> Which, by the way, funny thing, I'm wearing a spiritual gangster t-shirt right now. I freaking love their stuff. <laughs> I love their stuff too. Are you kidding? Like yeah, that whole term is like generally because of that. It's so cool, man. It's so cool. Because it no, I do feel like G'd up from the feet up when I wear that kind of stuff. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, no, I feel that. I feel that. What, but, uh, uh, what do you say to someone that is like, hey, you know, maybe I'm thinking about starting like some sort of spiritual practice or like, you know, where does, where does one go to start that or, or what does that look like? What do you say? So for me, I would say, um, have you practiced yoga before? Because if they haven't, then that would be the first introduction into like their true selves, like connecting to themselves, both mind, body and spirit, right? That's how I feel anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so my yoga practice had brought me that when I was first kind of seeking out some type of practice that would bring me closer to my truth. Um, so I would ask them that. Now, if they're like, yeah, I, I do. I practice yoga, you know, X amount of times, like uh, da, 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 da. Well, then I would start to say, well, um, I'd, you know, I'd probably say something along the lines of like meditation, um, but also, and this is the first thought that came to mind, first thought, best thought, right? Mm -hmm. um, is to start tr treating people like they are you, mm -hmm. I'd say. Um, because, you know, we get so caught up in the sense of like, oh, it's my time, it's my car, it's my life. Um, but, you know, our our little lives ripple out and we affect everyone around us, right? I think Ram Das was the one who said, treat everybody like God in drag. And I love that. God in drag. Yeah. So it's just in disguise. Like everybody oh. has that in them. They're just in drag. They're just, they're in another costume, another form. That's a good, I like that actually. Treat everyone like God in drag. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Okay. I'm into that. Mainly because I love drag queens. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, I mean, we all have a reasoning, right? That's really, that, I've never heard that before. That's really cool. Yeah, that's, uh, I like that concept, you know? And, um, and like the other one that says, like, everybody can be the guru if you learn how to listen. Mm. Mm. Um, you know, because trying to, t like, I have a Baba, I have my spiritual teacher and guru, but I'm not one to say, like, go find somebody that can, that can hold your highest self for you until you're ready to claim it. Right. which is what a guru is. Right. They hold it for you. They're not claiming that they know anything more than you. They're just like, I know what your highest self is and I'm going to hold that for you until you are ready to take it on as yourself. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, that's that's a really good way of conceptualizing that. I like that. Yeah. So, I wouldn't I would encourage them to to just begin to treat people like they're god and drag and listen to them as if they were a guru because everybody has something to learn from everybody else. That's very true. Like, I mean, that's, I think people forget that. Like every, every interaction that we have is an opportunity to learn something, whether we do it or not. I mean, it's completely different, but it really sure. is. It really is. Yeah. Okay. So you're on an elevator. Ooh. The doors are opening. You have 10 seconds as the, you turn around, the doors are getting ready to shut. This elevator is full of people. We'll call them world leaders. What do you what do you say to them in ten seconds? Oh oh gosh, my ten seconds are almost up. Okay, I have sec. Uh, uh, I love you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think that would probably count, like catch most of them off guard and be like, "What?" And, and then and then you throw in a really awkward winky face. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, like I love you. That's awesome. Bye. I love yeah. it. 
I love it. <laughs> well, Melissa, what uh, what do you have? What stuff do you have going on? If people want to find you, if people want to come look for you, um, or social media, where where do we where do we go to look? All right. Uh, so for social media, I have an Instagram account called Another Way to See. It's also just a play on words of Another Way to See Me on your screen. That's cool. Uh, yeah. So another way to see just spelt out without any spaces or anything. Yeah, um, I'll put that web- in the show notes as well. Oh, cool. Cool. And, um, and then, yeah, for website stuff with like my schedule of classes, I, um, you could go to Melissa may yoga.com. Cool. Yeah. Pretty simple stuff. And um, I'm going to be, huh? You're teaching in San Francisco, correct? Yes, San Francisco proper. I'm at um, Two Core Power Studios, uh, Equinox on Market, Dog Patch Boulders, and then I actually just got hired to sub at Yoga Tree. So hopefully, I'll be subbing around the city at the O's Studios soon too. Nice. So you're you're getting everywhere. I love it. But yeah, I, I'm uh, re- looking to spread the love in the spiritual gangster uh, lifestyle. You know, <laughs> the drive by Omings. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, exactly. (laughs) Well, Melissa, it's been a pleasure having you on the show today. Um, And until the next Yogi Misfit session, this is Melissa and Danny saying peace out. Peace out. Bye, everybody. Yeah. (laughs)